Ah, thank you. Merci beaucoup. Bonjour tout le monde. Bonjour. Okay, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde is hello everybody. So, bonjour tout le monde. Oh, okay. I think we need some practice en français. Sisters and brothers, uh, confrères, consoeurs, it's my honor to bring you greetings on behalf of our president, Ken Giorgetti, executive vice president, Marie Clark Walker, and secretary treasurer, Hassan Youssef, and on behalf of the 3.2 million workers who are members of the Canadian Labour Congress. Pour uh, mes confrères et consoeurs francophones, uh, désolé, je vais parler en anglais. Um, Peut-être au futur congrès, uh, je peux parler en les deux langues officielles du Canada. I've just explained to our francophone delegates that uh, for this congress, I'll be speaking uh, just in English. Um, and uh, perhaps at a future time, we can speak in uh, both official languages of Canada. I want to thank uh, International President Ron Heitzman, I want to thank your executive board for inviting the Congress to speak to you today. I want to thank you for your wonderful, wonderful hospitality. A special thank you to uh, Inez Wells and to Beth Petrusik for their help uh, during my visit here. I want to thank you as well for the wonderful evening on Monday night. Uh, it was fabulous. Uh, was Monday night? No, that was Monday Sunday night. night. Sunday night. How could I forget Sunday night? Because I also wanted to thank you for the roller coaster ride. Uh, if for those of you that didn't go on it, unless you've got a really good heart, don't. And I can tell you that I did not see a thing because I closed my eyes to the whole thing. I want to thank as well our Canadian directors who I've had the pleasure of serving with over my years on the CLC Executive Council. They work hard at making sure that we know the issues that affect ATU members from coast to coast to coast. And the issues that affect your members, like reducing and preventing violence against transit operators and improving public transit services, clearly they tell us and show us cross our borders. There is no border on those issues. The CLC is pleased to work with the ATU in Canada to fight on behalf of your members to make sure that we are advancing their interests in our country and beyond. I'm happy to be joining you here in Orlando to hear some of the issues on the convention floor, uh, uh, your voices about how the world situation is affecting you. Uh, I'm happy as well to get to know some of the Canadian delegates and to get to uh, reconnect again with, in particular, the delegates from my home province of Saskatchewan, where I'm pleased and proud to say we had a very, very good, strong working relationship with the ATU over my 14 years as uh, president of the SFL. You know, it may come as a surprise to some Americans and maybe to some of you uh, in this room that um, Canada is your largest trading partner. We do more trade with you even than China does. So that's a little bit of information that we don't always see from either side of the border. But you know, we're much more than business associates. We are good neighbors. We are good friends. At the border crossing between the United States and Canada near Vancouver, British Columbia, is a magnificent peace arch built in 1921. The inscription on the U.S. side reads, children of a common mother. And on the Canadian side, it reads, brethren dwelling together in unity. I would amend that to brothers and sisters dwelling together in unity, because that's exactly a description of the relationship we have between the labor movements in our two great countries. We have worked so closely together in our shared values for so long, it's a testament to our solidarity. We are truly brothers and sisters across the border. 
The close relationship between the Canadian and American labour movement actually demonstrates the theme of your own convention, working together to secure our future. Because that's what we are doing, working in common cause, taking advice, guidance and inspiration from each other, and together trying to make a better future for workers in our countries and around the globe. And sisters and brothers, there hasn't been a more important time for union members to be working together since the Great Depression of the 1930s. Unemployment in Canada and in the U.S. remains unacceptably high. It's a shame, it's a disgrace that unemployment is so high. Millions are jobless. In Canada, we've lost almost 500,000 jobs. The vast, vast majority of those are good-paying, often unionized jobs in the manufacture, manufacturing and resource sectors. The jobs being created, so-called created, are short-term, part-time, low-wage, no-benefit jobs. And that's not a job that you can support a family on. <laughs> Wages in our countries stagnate and even drop. Governments in Canada have now turned their uh, sights onto attacking the public sector. Or as I read in one newspaper in Canada a while ago, it's time for the public sector to share the pain. And that's no way to make sure that we're rebuilding our countries. And employers, both public and private sector, are exploiting the employment crisis to demand yet more concessions from workers. But in Canada, as it's the same theme as I heard on your floor yesterday, there really is a real solution for the recession, and that's to listen to the advice of ordinary workers, people who go to work and bring home a paycheck and try and support their families and their communities. The big business CEOs on, on both sides of our borders tell governments what to do, and those CEOs think that they're pretty smart. But the market meltdown of 2008 proves that they are not smart. They created this economic and employment crisis. It wasn't working people. It wasn't the people in this room. So let's think about these guys, mostly guys that are CEOs of these big corporations that tell governments what to do. So let's think about them for a moment. So for example, uh, I don't know how many people have stocks in this room, but if you had, uh, if you had listened to your stockbroker and invested $1,000 in Lear Corporation at the beginning of 2008, it would have been worth just $15.84 by 2009. $1,000, $15.84. If you'd invested $1,000 in the AIG Group in 2008, it would have been worth by mid-2009 $11.82. If you had put $1,000 into Nortel Networks, your shares would have, been dro would have dropped to only $8.40 in just 18 months. You would have lost, out of your $1,000, $991.60. Now, if you'd listened to some tongue-in-cheek advice from Canadian workers, you could have done much better. They would have told you to invest in beer. Now, just be aware, not beer stocks. I'm telling you, they would have told you to invest in beer. Uh, they would have told you to buy, in Canada, $1,000 worth of Molson Canadian beer instead of investing in any of those other stocks. First off, you wouldn't have paid a cent to your financial advisor. If you had managed your asset well, you would have felt better about tough times for many months. And in Canada, after drinking $1,000 worth of beer, the deposit on all those empty beer bottles is still holding steady at $60, more than all those other shares put together. So, um, 
So we, want to, we Canadians want to tell our American friends, keep your assets liquid and always recycle. And the good news is uh, we think that same advice should hold for Budweiser. Now seriously, um, I want to tell you that in addition to making some interesting connections between uh, investments and buying beer, the Canadian Labour Congress has been busy and we've been doing pretty good at some of the things that we've been working on. The reason is really quite simple. The CLC and our affiliated unions, federations of labor and labor councils have been working extremely hard to maintain a high union density in Canada. About 30% of Canadian workers are unionized today. It's not high enough yet, but it's 30%. And it's not easy, as you all know well, very well in the United States. Our laws in Canada, too, are far from perfect. And right-wing governments take every opportunity to take away or restrict our human rights and our labor rights. And we say that human rights are labor rights and labor rights are human rights. I'm, I'm not here today to try and boast or lecture about what was going on in Canada. After all, uh, <clears throat> we have a current prime minister who is a great pal of George W. Bush, mini, mini George. And right now, he has a minority government uh, in, uh, in the Canadian Parliament. And he's able to do a number of things with a minority government that we're fighting hard against. Uh, but he's, he's going for a majority government. That's what he wants. And our job is to stop him and just kick him right out of Parliament altogether. That's what we need to do. Because the CLC and our affiliates need to build support for the politicians and the political parties that actually listen, actually listen to the concerns of working people. And we put pressure on all elected members of all parties at all levels of government, municipal, provincial, territorial, federal. We put pressure on them to do the right thing. And I heard that theme constantly yesterday do the right thing, put workers, their families, and their communities first. And we are having some results that I want to tell you about briefly this morning. You know, when um, the consequences of the economic crisis hit, we very starkly saw something that we've been talking about for a while. We've got that economic crisis still in front of us. And we decided that we needed to develop an innovative plan to improve retirement security for all, not just for our members, but for all Canadians. We know what this crisis has done to people's lives and to their futures. We need to ensure that market forces that devastated many workers' pension plans and retirement savings never again threaten the right of Canadians to retire with dignity and with security. Our plan, our plan is simple, it's effective, and it's affordable. And we are close to convincing politicians to act. We want to expand the publicly run Canada Pension Plan so that future benefits double. And for our American sisters and brothers, that would be like doubling your Social Security retirement benefits. The Canada Pension Plan, Canada Pension Plan is paid to all retirees and is in addition to your own workplace pension plans and your own savings. And we're making some significant progress for our efforts. Most recently, the CLC has helped convince the majority of provincial and territorial finance ministers to support an expansion of the Canada Pension Plan, and this is a huge accomplishment already. Because a year ago, those same politicians believed that Canadians should simply save more for their retirement by investing their money in stocks and mutual funds. Those same funds that charge some of the highest management fees in the world, Fees that simply eat into workers' hard-earned savings and divert them into the pockets of the Bay Street and Wall Street financial elite. 
Now, our politicians don't yet support doubling the CPP benefits, but we've got them coming along on a very positive start. start. We also have, because of the work that we're doing at the municipal level, we have the strong backing of Canadian mayors and, and city councillors who have passed a resolution at their recent convention of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. They passed a resolution on pension reform that is nearly identical to the CLC plan. And that's because the CLC, working with our affiliates, help those mayors and councillors see that's what needs to be done for their communities. So why do we need to double the Canada Pension Plan? Today in Canada, there are 1.6 million seniors living in poverty. In other words, earning less than $16,000 a year. That's simply unacceptable after a lifetime of work that people should be living in poverty. Private savings in Canada through what's known as the Registered Retirement Savings Plan, or RRSP, are no solution. Only one in three Canadians actually bought RRSPs in 2008. And one third of Canadian workers between the ages of 24 and 64 have absolutely no, absolutely no personal retirement savings, none. So we need to do something about the Canada Pension Plan because it really gets only worse. Only 38.5% of Canadian employers offer any pensions at all to their workers, and most of those are in unionized workplaces. And as everyone here knows, and I heard it referred to on the floor yesterday, employers are trying to force workers to give up their superior defined benefit pension plans and accept inferior defined contribution plans where income depends on that same high-risk market. And I've never had so many conversations with workers over the, until the last couple of years that they say, that's why we need a defined contribution plan as opposed to defined, or defined benefit plan as opposed to defined contribution. So that's why the Canadian Labour Congress retirement plan is so important and why the support of ATU in Canada is also so es essential. Because with your support, as part of a strong and determined effort, the Canadian labour movement will win this important change to dramatically improve the lives of all working people as a result. We're going to win this one for all Canadians. <clears throat> Sisters and brothers, solving the retirement security crisis is our biggest challenge in front of us. But it's not the only area where the Canadian Labour Con Congress is winning for workers. We are also, as your convention theme says, working to together to secure our future in other ways. Before the employment and economic crisis hit, the CLC and our affiliated unions fought hard to win new bankruptcy protection legislation in our parliament to help workers. So when that market crash began in 2008, the laws were in place to ensure that for the first time ever, Canadian workers' wages had a higher legal priority than investors and creditors in corporate bankruptcies. That was a big win for a lot of people who lost their jobs. As well, no judge or bankruptcy trustee can now violate a Canadian collective agreement to shortchange workers of their pay and of their severance. And the Canadian government didn't implement that legislation because they thought it was the right thing to do or because they like workers. The Canadian government was forced to do so by the labour movement, including the ATU, mounting a powerful lobby effort to pressure members of parliament in all parties right across Canada. And we did the same thing to win greatly improved health and safety rules on violence in the workplace, a particular concern for the ATU, and we also have had some important wins on ergonomics. And our record doesn't really stop there. We, we don't get many chances. I heard yesterday people talking about, we talk about problems, but you know, we've got to talk about the things that win. We can't inspire people to join this movement if we talk about the problems we have. We've got to talk about the things that we win and the things that we do. In just the past few years, the CLC has helped to elect 
More than 800 Labour Council-endorsed mayors, city councillors, and school trustees across Canada, something that is vitally important to ATU members. And we're going to win more seats in upcoming municipal elections this year and in future years because our political action campaign at the municipal level is long-term, it's well-resourced, and it's a serious commitment to our communities. And we have, as I said, a lot of work to do at the federal level because of the Prime Minister and the kinds of people he's got in his government. But in the last election, the CLC carefully targeted ridings with large numbers of unionized workers. And as a result of that political action, the CLC and its affiliates help the political party that supports uh, Labour and that Labour supports, the New Democratic Party, we help the NDP win the second highest number members of Parliament ever. And that's because we went out and worked with our members about what the issues were for working people in our communities and our country. So sisters and brothers, as I wrap up, those are just a few of the examples of what we're doing in Canada. We've learned that lesson, that when we work together, when we demand that workers' voices be heard in government, and when we organize and more workers come into unions, the results can be tremendous. We do secure our future together. We know that we can work best together when the diverse voices of our members are heard when they tell their stories, when they have a chance to give direction and to take action. And in Canada, we regularly say that our future as a labour movement is young, it's workers of colour, it's Aboriginal workers, it's new Canadians, and it's women. That's our future together. And we know that we can move mountains and secure our future together when the diversity, of our, the diversity of our communities is reflected in our work. Our security is in our diversity. Thank you for listening to what the Canadian Labour Congress is doing with your members and with workers across Canada. Thank you to ATU, to my brothers and sisters, especially the ones in, in Canada that I've worked closely with and that I hope to work closely with in the future. Thank you for your support of the CLC. I want you to have a great convention. Merci beaucoup for votre attention. Solidarity forever, for the union makes us strong. Solidarity, confrères et consoeurs. Merci beaucoup.